time that he's been on pole position. He's in the red car there. Sean Trainer, the multiple champion beside him on the front row of the grid. And Aaron Cook with work to do from row number three. Lights go out, the race gets underway, and it's a pretty even start from the two on the front. It's uh, six uh, Mark Threes in the first, eight cars on the grid as they head up towards uh, Rich's corner for the first time. And it's going to be Sylvester, I think, that holds on to the lead as they go through Rich's for the first time. Sean Trainer slotting into second place then. We'll see where Aaron Cook slots into all of this as well. Has he made a, a decent start? Trainer looking to the outside of Sylvester as they go around the right-hander at Wilson for the first time. Aaron Cook's got back to fourth, so he's started to make a move, and he's just in behind the number 71 car of Graham Mailings. As for the moment, at least, Josh, it's Mark Three Roadsters, first, second, third, and fourth. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Let's see what the light right. and chocolate can do to fight back, and Sean Train is fighting for the lead. He's up the inside of Daniel Sylvester already, using all those years of experience uh, on cold tyres to go into the lead. Down the inside, uh, Mailings has run wide, he's third now. Gained another place, now fighting back on the exit, Sylvester up to the I don't think that's going to work out for him, it's not. So Sean Trainer is the leader of the motor race, ahead of Sylvester. And Alan Cook made a really good start here, he's in third, he's with the top two. It'll be interesting to see what uh, he can do here whether he's got good pace to uh, race these two in front over the course of the 15 minutes or so that we've got coming up. There's Paul Cook in his last race in the championship uh, before he turns his attention fully to his uh, BMW M3. So I guess we'll see him next weekend at Donington Park. Yeah, we should do. So leaders heading down the Bentley Strait. Sean Trainer it is ahead now of Daniel Sylvester. Aaron Cook into third position. Graham Mailings in fourth as they turn their way through Nelson for the first time. The first of the Mark IIs is the uh, car of Alistair Topley, who uh, started this race in fourth position. He's fifth here, just ahead of Paul Cook. And then the next of the Mark IIs it's probably Ben Rowe, I think, but he's several cars further back. Big, big moment there for Aaron Cook in third position as he went through Corum. He's lost a couple of car lengths because of that, but he's managed to hold on to the car. He's still ahead of Mailings and uh, Toppy just behind him. This great sight of these colourful Toyota MR2s head over the line and Daniel Sylvester pulling out of the slipstream. He's got his car back in front of, uh, of Sean Trainer, I think. Is he going to slot around the outside? into Richie's corner, well they're absolutely two abreast as they go through, but Sean Trainer with the inside line, he should be able to convert that into the lead at uh, the hairpin at Wilson, but this has brought Aaron Cook into the equation as well, so it's five cars for the lead as they head round Wilson. Yeah, it's really close, like the first race was, and good to see Aaron Cook's uh, got good pace here to battle it out. The gap in the championship came down to four points after the, uh, the earlier race with that win from Cook. But it's a trainer that leads this train of MR2s, four Mark III roasters and uh, the Mark II at the back there. Alistair Topley's a good battle behind between Ben Rowe and Paul Cook. But uh, up front, it's a trainer from Sylvester. So he's managed to fight that uh, challenge off that we saw at the start of the lap that came from uh, Daniel Sylvester. So Sylvester's doing a great uh, job here. Got his first podium earlier on. He breaks late into the uh, Oggies hairpin there but Trainer was able to stay ahead once again and then Aaron Cook uh, third. Graham Mailings have been probably his best run uh, of the season there in fourth. I think he's had a sixth was his uh, best result this year and uh, Trainer goes fully defensive down the Bentley straight so that means Sylvester's got the run I think it does so can he go around the outside this is what Sean Trainer tried in the earlier race Trainer waits as late as possible to get the car turned in which kind of means he stays in front they all hop over the kerb though and that doesn't really affect anybody too much if anything Trainer's got a slightly larger margin certainly has so it's a Trainer from Sylvester in this self-built uh, car for the driver from Yorkshire and he started racing a couple of years ago so he's not got as much experience as, as either of the drivers around him, Sean Train or Aaron Cook nor the championship titles that they've accumulated between them either, six of them Toppy there in fourth oh, and over the grass there was 21, that's uh, Sylvester of course that loses him another couple of tens and it might sap his momentum along the centre straight and allow uh, number one Aaron Cook to get a run on him up towards 
Riches, although saying that, it looks like Sylvester actually has a good run on trainer. He's got some good punch in that engine by the looks of it, Daniel Sylvester. And he's able to stick with the race leader. He managed to keep hold of the toe, which no doubt helped. Is he leaving the door open on the inside here? No, he's not leaving the door open on the inside for Aragorn. I thought he might be for a moment. It looked like it was three of Bresla, still a little bit further back. We'll try and pick up what happened there in a moment. Sean Trainer got onto the grass on the exit of Wilson that time, but he still holds the lead. So Sean Trainer, number 27 leading, 21 Daniel Sylvester in second, and uh, Aaron Cook here, still third in car number one. Yep, it's uh, really close. Down into Agostini, they all have a little look. Is Aaron Cook going to... To have a go, no, he decided better of that. This is that other group that Ian noticed was pretty good. Well, Paul Cook's at the front of it, ahead of Ben Rowe. Adam Lockwood, who's not had quite such a good run this weekend. Uh, Neil Stratton and Darren Aldler, all involved in that battle. So we've got five for the lead, five for six. So it's a good battle within the uh, top ten here. But it's a trainer who made that move early on. who has been able to hang on in front. Looks like that, that move early on could have been important here because the cars behind have certainly got the pace. Absolutely. So there's Paul Cook. He's leading the next group ahead of Ben Rowe, then Adam Lockwood, then Neil Stratton, and Darren Old within the number six car brings up the rear of that group. And there's quite a gap back to Daniel Bryant, who's 11th at the moment. The leaders are side by side though on the way into Brundle. It's Sylvester on the inside line that goes through to take the lead. So Daniel Sylvester gets the lead back from Sean Trainer. Aaron Cook tries to take the rallycross line around the outside to get the position away from Trainer as well, but to uh, no avail. So it's still uh, Trainer second and Cook third, but Topley now being brought increasingly back into the equation. He was about a second or so behind this group at the beginning of the lap, but he's right with them now. Yeah, so this is uh, pretty good stuff. It was a really good move from Sylvester because Trainer was defending pretty hard up towards Brundle over the last few laps, but this time he managed to get up alongside him. And now the two championship contenders are side by side. The uh, drivers, I think, got something like six championships between them, Trainer and uh, Sylvester. And Trainer might lose out here. Uh, Dan um, and Cook, I should have said, so he might lose out here to Aaron Cook. And Aaron Cook goes around the outside of Sean Trainer and goes through. And now it's the top lead tried to get involved in that, he's just set the fastest lap. 219.96, we just saw the car of 69 off the road, that's uh, Daniel Bryant, he was in 11th position. But yeah, 219.96 uh, is uh, still well outside the uh, the lap record, not as quick as we saw early on either, I don't think. And they're battling hard, that's probably partly the reason. But uh, it's uh, Sylvester then leading once more but now he's got a different contender with Aaron Cook behind him uh, it seems whoever gets out front can't get away in this championship today side by side in the background for fourth and again for seventh places I think uh, who was involved for seventh oh didn't quite pick that up I think it was Paul Cook in sixth I think it's probably Ben Rowe and Adam Lockwood that were disputing seventh place there here are the leaders though so Daniel Sylvester early on today got his first podium finish with a, a, a second place. Can he go one better here today? That would be quite something to uh, to fend the, these drivers off. Aaron Cook and Sean Trainer, drivers with so much experience, it'd be a real feather in his cap, I'm sure. Yeah, he's getting quicker and quicker, isn't he? He always fire up the orders at meeting on meeting uh, recently. But so he's getting a workout this weekend with Racecraft against uh, these more experienced races. And it is Sylvester then that turns through the S's. Touch over the curbs, which means Aaron Cook's got the run. Cook's up the inside here, and they will run side by side. Just about avoiding leaning on one another. But Cook's got the inside. Here comes Trainer. Surely not free of breast in decorum. That's uh, not uh, allowed, I don't think. <laughs> it certainly wouldn't end well. So oh, now he's gone there. He's sideways as Trainer. He saved it. But it's Aaron Cook the leads. Daniel Sylvester is second. Sean Trainer is third. It's just like race one. Nice and simple. <laughs> It is, and Trevor almost got so sideways there that it would have tagged the back of uh, the Sylvester car if he wasn't much, wasn't very careful. Fortunately, that didn't happen. So it's Cook now leading. It's uh, Sylvester second, Sean Trainer third. Five and a half minutes of the race left to go. Alistair Topley still fourth. Aaron Cook now is in the best lap of the race. So on the lap that he got the lead as well. So that's a good going. Graham Mailing's fifth. Paul Cook rounding out the top six as things stand up towards. Wilson Hairpin, named for the late 
Justin Wilson. And these four together, Topley flying the flag for the Mark IIs, the older, heavier two-litre cars from the 1990s, the Mark III's from the noughties. And uh, they've gradually become more numerous over the years. Uh, as you'd expect, a more modern car, replacing of cars that may fall by the wayside as time goes on. And certainly both Aaron Cook and Sean Trainer won their early championships in Mark IIs before switching to the more modern cars. It's Paul Cook on that last lap. I was just looking. Yeah, he was a few tenths faster than Graham Mailing, so Paul Cook just slightly closing in on the leading quintet as well and taking uh, Adam Lockwood, Ben Roney, or Stratton and Darren Aldworth with him. So, lap five. Cook just touches uh, the dirt there, but that's not really a problem, I don't think, for him as they turn their way through out of Williams for lap five, what should be seven, all being well, as they make their way then. These five have been pretty inseparable during the course of this race. Aaron Cook, uh, not Aaron Cook, uh, Andrew Strange, I should say, out of the race, number 51. He's into the pit lane, but we're watching uh, Aaron Cook now with Daniel Sylvester and Sean Trainer, who's That's extremely <laughs> wide. Gets back onto the circuit. I've, I, he sort of powered his way back onto the circuit. I felt sure he was going to lose the position to Alistair Topley there. Who, not yet. But not yet, but he has lost a lot of ground all of a sudden. For the second or so, between second and third, between Sylvester and Trainer. I think uh, certainly Topley had his wits about him there and saw that uh, Trainer was rejoining in a hurry. Yeah, he's sideways, I think, across the grass, wasn't it? It was quite lively. Uh, you were concerned he was going to lose the race. I was concerned he was going to be involved in an accident getting back on. But uh, all of that uh, didn't happen. He's still there in third. So top two got away in all of that, like you say. Can Topley get third here around the outside into Richie's? Well, he's giving it his uh, best shot, but uh, Trainer on the inside... Has just about held on. Cook lead. Second Sylvester there together then into the uh, the hairpin. We didn't get a last lap board, I don't think, no, did we? So no. we, we will get the seven laps in. 19 has had a spin at Murray in. And Alistair Topley's on the grass now. Yeah, 19 Cameron Bell, the Nottingham driver in his uh, roadster. He's had a, a moment. Yeah, Topley across the grass as Graham Mailings has gone alongside him through Palmer. But he himself has run wide. So they're side by side. So top two now quite a long way clear. So we had five absolutely together for the whole race. That's kind of not the case anymore. And Topley did hang on to the fourth. So they've all kind of spread out a little bit. Except for the top two. They're still pretty close. So Aaron Cook is in the lead of the race. Car number one from Daniel Sylvester, number 21, in second position. They're turning their way through Oggies. And then on towards uh, Williams. Bit of a moment there for Cook as he kicked up the dust on the exit uh, of Oggies. So onto the Bentley straight for the penultimate time. Oh, and that's Tom Mailings, is it? Yes, it is Tom Mailings that's had a spin. He was 16th, so well down the order anyway, right in the middle of the pack. Leaders coming towards us then. But it is uh, the top two, clearly uh, a long way ahead of the rest now. In the background, we can see Ben Rowe and Neil Stratton jinking out to the left-hand side of the circuit uh, as they disputed 8th and ninth places. Paul Cook, you sure saw going through the back of shot as well, number 26th in 6th position. Cook using quite a lot of the kerb there on the exit of the bomb hole, Josh, as they come towards Corum for the penultimate time. Yeah, that's right, and Cook's pretty far through Corum, but that's also pretty sideways. But you're really sideways again, why? That's... Uh, You've got to be a little bit careful, keep doing that, haven't you? Running wide. Uh, oh, another car off now. It's the same one again. It's uh, Daniel Bryant again. We saw him off earlier on. Last lap board. Across the line go the leaders. The gap is six tenths. New fastest lap that time by the leader, Aaron Cook. And that is now faster than we went in the earlier race, I think. 2.19.24. I think it was 2.19.25 in the earlier race. There's any different type of race for Aaron Cook because the earlier race he was or defending all the way through, where this race is uh, come through the pack to the front, I mean, could do a brown touch. Yeah, uh, absolutely, and um, I wonder if that speaks of a different setup on the car or something like that for this race, because he really was having to work hard to keep people behind him earlier on, wasn't he? Whereas in this encounter, it's been a very different race. That's the 14 car that's now had a spin, that's Gareth Baxter, 
in the road to another drive that's converted to a mark three in his case well mark one but if it stays as it is I think Cook will get the championship lead going away from St Edgerton because it was four points I made it make it going into this uh, race yeah they go to Silverstone next month for the next round then Cadwell Park and Alton Park to complete the season another six races still to go in the championship clocks could tick down to zero yeah half a lap for Aaron Cook to hang on how close is Sylvester now he was six tenths back at the start of the lap and it's bigger isn't it the gap's bigger Sylvester's a bit wide over the whole race not quite able to live with Aaron Cook so they uh, make their way then down the Bentley Street so we're going to have the same the same podium if it stays as it is as race one although the race has been very different yeah hasn't it just into uh, Brundle and Nelson then for the final time at the end of Bentley Strait. So it's, ooh, Sylvester's doing his best not to finish in P2 by going very wide uh, at Nelson now through the compression of the bomb hole. It's the tradition of this race, I think, isn't it? To have some part of the race on the grass. Yeah, most people have done that at some point. Aaron Cook, though, has extended his lead on this final lap. It was six tenths per second at the start. It's quite a bit more than that now, so it's been a good final lap for, for Aaron Cook. So he's going to come through to take his fourth victory of the season. So that makes it 5-4 between Tra Trader and Cook in the victory stakes this season. So that's even things up very nicely indeed in the championship. Over the line he goes, and he wins in the end by 2.02 uh, .02 seconds from Daniel Sylvester. So he takes second place. He equals his best finish from early on today. 27, Sean Trainer takes third. 41, Alistair Topley is fourth. Graham Maidings, number 71, is fifth. And he'd almost sort of dropped back into the clutches then of Paul Cook, number 26, in sixth place. Adam Lockwood, number 11, took seventh. 31, Ben Rowe was eighth. Neil Strassen was ninth, number 84. And Darren Oldworth, again, he dropped a long way back on the final lap, but he still, nevertheless, finished in tenth position. Just watched out the corner, uh, out of the country box. Danny Bright had the most unbelievable drift through Coram all the way out the corner. I thought he was going to have an accident, but didn't. Um, so that was uh, something to watch back on his onboard curve after the race, I'm sure. Uh, Maxine Nichols is involved in the battle before the end. She's side by side there with number 14, uh, Gareth Baxter. One drive that's moved over from a Mark 1 to, to a Mark 3. They're going to have a race to the line and finish pretty much uh, dead even with Maxine Nichols just ahead. But uh, it's Aaron Cook then that uh, takes the win. And... Uh, as you say, that's five for Trainer, four for Cook. Well, I think uh, one of the wins at Donington for Trainer doesn't count as a championship points because of the uh, the problems we have there. So actually, out of point scoring finishes, they've both got four wins uh, now, and that's why they're separated by very little in the championship standings after that race. And as you say, Silverstone up next in, what, three weeks, I think? Yeah, that's right. So that's uh, going to be the next uh, stage on the other side of the track to what they were earlier in the year. And uh, that was where Aaron Cook dominated and Sean Trainer struggled. So it'll be interesting to see how that changes. And, uh, Sean Trainer, I can see, just giving Aaron Cook a big hug. So they uh, obviously enjoyed uh, how that race went. Of course, Trainer did lead it for some of it, but uh, it was Aaron Cook that came out of top. And Kieran McGinley's down there. So let's hear from him. We're uh, firstly our race winner, Aaron Cook. Well, here we are then with our top three of that last race, and I'm here with our race winner in Aaron Cook. Aaron, uh, you haven't copied and pasted this result, have you? Top three, exactly the same, but it looks like you had some fun out there. Yeah, great. Uh, we started a bit out of position. We was in sixth. Um, we've been struggling with uh, some handling issues the last few meetings, so we've not really been where we needed, well, where we wanted to be anyway. Um, we, we had a air pipe, air intake pipe collapse on us in race one, so luckily I managed to hold, hold them off. Um, that one, we got it fixed, started sixth, had a good, had a good battle, had a good fight. I'm worth it in the end because two wins on the bounce. How are you feeling about that? Yeah, great. Um, I needed to get something back on Sean, and uh, t today's the day, so um, we just need to carry on, really. I know Sean, he'll be back at the next meeting, but uh, we just need to do as good as we can, and that's all we can do, really. Absolutely, and exactly the same result, even though you started P6. Not a bad day. 
No, I much prefer to come from P6 to, to first and start first and finish first. It's a lot more rewarding, uh, a lot more fun on the way as well. So, yeah. Absolutely. Aaron, congratulations on the victory. And two on the bounce, enjoy the rest of your evening. Brilliant. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Let's have a look and see if we can have our second place driver in Daniel Sylvester. Uh, let's just, oh, sorry, we're going to interrupt this conversation. Daniel, second place for you. Exactly yeah. the same result as this morning. How are you feeling? Yeah, feeling pretty good. It's going to have a good race, yeah. So I'm pretty happy with, with how the car went. Had a couple of troubles towards the end, started dropping off a bit, I was starting to run out of fuel a little bit, but it's all good. Finished the race, second place, pretty chuffed. And you and Aaron were at one point trading lap times there towards the end. Yeah, yeah, it was going to be really close, I think. Uh, there were some areas where I thought I was faster than him, but Aaron's got, you know, he's a double champion, isn't he? So just to be up there with him feels really good, to be honest. So. Well, two second places in a row. How are you feeling after today, then? Yeah, really good, yeah. So, you know, I was a bit rubbish here last year, so put the time in the practice sessions and stuff like that and that's paying off so yeah feeling good stuff. good stuff congratulations on p2 and uh, let's see if we've just got time just for a quick chat with our third place driver in sean trainer sean i've had to come all the way back over here sean third place again how are you yeah. feeling yeah not too bad um I, I tried a little thing with running a uk box in the car this weekend because we weren't 100 percent sure about a japanese box which has got the closer ratios so i thought oh, i'll try it. it might be all right here watch some videos and thought yeah that'd be all right and it hadn't paid off. <laughs> so it's, it's down to, I mean, the car was going well. I thought I drove all right most of the time, apart from the few little mistakes. But um, Aaron was on it again. I think he had a bit of an issue in the first race. But down the straights, against both of them, I couldn't do nothing. So I'll be changing the gearbox for Silverstone. <laughs> well, uh, two podiums today. Good day at the office for you? Yeah, not too bad. It, it could have been better. Well, it can always be better. Well, most of the time it can be better. But... <laughs> But I'll take it. Do you know what I mean? Going home, the car's in one piece. It's not broke. It's always a bonus. Always a bonus indeed. Sean, thank you so much for talking to us. Congratulations on P3. And with that then comes to the final race of the day, the handicap race for the Race Parts Historic 750 Formula Series.